Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, this is Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And us being on the air can only mean one thing, and that is football season is back. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson and B Mad Brian Madden. Guys, a little bit warm for football, but nobody's complaining about the weather tonight. Not at all, uh, Matt. And uh, it's always exciting that first game of the season, especially when it's at home. And another exciting thing about high school football, at the beginning of the year, you always get to see the new talent that steps up, even if it's from last year or somebody new coming from out of the state that's gotten here. But it should be interesting, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, getting back involved in Brockton High football. Um, it's always exciting. Win, lose, or draw. They always play hard and bring um, bring aggression to the game. Well, guys, numerous upgrades to Marciano Stadium. We saw it a little bit for the national anthem. New lights, LEDs, they flash, they strobe, they fade, they do everything that a smart light can do. And that certainly plays into the atmosphere in a packed house tonight. Should play into that very well for the boxers, Brian. It should. It should. It's going to be um, exciting. I mean, new things are happening, like you said. New uniforms, new lights. Um, the field is awesome, as always. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Brockton kicking off to the Lexington Minutemen to start this one off. Last year was the first year of this matchup on the schedule. We were up at Lexington High. A lot of history up there full grass field. It's not the turf that we normally see. And to kick off is Carlin's Jean of the Boxers from the 40 yard line. The Boxers are wearing their new black jerseys with maroon and white trim. The Minutemen in white jerseys with blue and gold trim. A return of just a few short yards to the 21 and that is where we will see Lexington's new quarterback, of course, last year, the young gentleman graduating. Thankfully for the boxers, he torched them for 440 total yards and went to BC on a full baseball scholarship, not even football. <laughs> well, that was a decent run by Matt Pusateri. Oh, we're gonna have fun with names this year. <laughs> <laughs> Always an adventure. Lexington's quarterback in the gun with a four wide out set. Flags on the first offensive play of the game. The quarterback is number seven, Anthony Bianchi. We saw him in limited action last year at Minuteman High School. Yeah, Lexington's a little nervous right here at the beginning. They kind of muffed the uh, kickoff and didn't get anywhere with that. And now it's um, too much time on the first play of the game, on the first play of the offense. Interesting schedule for the boxers this year. We'll get into that a little bit more later. Three receivers to the far side. One lone wide out to the near sideline. Bianchi in the shotgun, rolls out to the wide side. Now throws across his body. He's got a man and it is incomplete. I thought for a second he had it, Brian, but as he was falling, it rolled loose and the boxer did an excellent job finishing the job and knocking that one out. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah Laguerre, um defended very well. Got in there and uh, deflected that ball away. Yeah, I tell you, what freed up that receiver was the quarterback when he was rolling out. He pumped fake, and that brought in the defender just enough for the, um, but it was a great uh, recovery play, like you said, Brian, on the defender to break up that pass play. Split wideouts throw over the middle quickly, incomplete. Lexington looking to air it out often and early in this first quarter, Brian. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, Anthony, they might have a lot of... Uh, confidence in Anthony Bianchi. Or maybe their running game is weak. Yeah, that's a good What's point, Brian. Possibly it could be weak. I don't see any big backs in the backfield. Trips to the far side, look like a false start, no flags thrown. Bianchi is wrapped up. Are they gonna be able to bring him down? Yes. Yeah, and that was, that was good good stance by the Brockton defense. They put pressure on the quarterback, and they just closed that pocket up and gobbled him up for a loss. Yeah, 
Yeah, what, Sigus Okanola? Yeah, Okan Okanola. Okanola. Good stuff there by Sigus. He, yeah, swallowed him up quickly. Short punt now, bounces at the 40 yard line across midfield, and it is touched down at the 43 yard line of the boxers. And that is where we'll have the first look of the season at the boxer offense, of course. A couple of quarterbacks graduating last year. Matt Caruso was the year before. And I believe it will be one of the Norman brothers under center for the boxers tonight. And the boxers are looking to bounce back from, um, you know, a poor season last year with three and, what they were, three and eight. So they're looking to um, definitely bounce back and have a positive season this year. It is number 11, Michael Norman under center for the boxers. Split wideouts, one to each side. Now number 16, Isaiah Laguerre rolls out to the far side. Handoff right off the bat and charging ahead, reaching out to get to the 45 was number 25, uh, Johnny Horn. And we see the light strobing a little bit. As it yes. gets darker, they'll be uh, a little more visible. Well, you know, Matt, you can tell that the fluorescent lights because the lighting is a lot different than and it was in the past. And it's much brighter. Yes. yes. The last few years, it's gotten a little rough right around midfield as the two, uh, two light towers are at the goal lines on either side. Now Norman hands off to Horn again. Horn to the far side. Charging ahead, keeping the legs churning. A gain of about four. The boxers are about a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, Horn did a nice job. Being patient when he ran with the football, watched his blockers, and advanced when he couldn't. He just short of a first down. Michael Norman, the longtime backup for the boxers. He was second on the depth chart behind Matthew Caruso his senior year two years ago. The big guy to watch on offense, once he gets going, is Sonny Okanlola. He's a multi-sport athlete. We talk about it all the time. The center of the boxers basketball team is Horn charges ahead. He's got a first down for the boxers. Yeah, Horn's been the go-to man so far in his first drive for the boxers. Yeah, and he's doing good, doing very well, finding those holes, picking his spots, and um, getting positive yards. Get a good look at the new unis for the boxers. Shout out to Mayor Bill Carpenter for ponying up new uniforms for the boxers. Much brighter, much easier to see the numbers. Yes. It is Oak and Lola and Isaiah Laguerre to the far side. Fun fact about Laguerre, he is the first cousin of Vanessa Clairvaux, the Fumble. Olympic hopeful for Haiti as the ball comes out. And the boxers have fumble recovered the fumble. The recovered. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was a miscue on the snap to the quarterback, but luckily Brockton um, retains the football. Yeah, it's a beautiful, uh, it's not quite fall yet, not quite. but it feels, feels like fall. It's about yeah. 65 degrees, perfect night for football. Perfect. Hand off to Horn, charging ahead back past the original line of scrimmage. And a couple of yards past that, a gain of about four or five on the play. It'll be a third and give or take seven for the boxers. No, it was third and 10, because he was behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Lexington's defense has done a pretty good job on this particular um, down situation. Made the box, gonna have to make the boxes work on long yardage to get the first down. Split wideouts, a four receiver set, two split to each side. Norman in the shotgun for the first time on this young season. Receives the high snap, looking long to the near side and overthrowing his man. It was number 88 for the boxers. That is Navon Reed, another multi-sport athlete on the basketball team. Yeah, that looked like a timing play right there where the um, receiver went downfield a little bit, didn't cut inside, but um, the timing was off. It's early in the season, so, you know, they'll iron that out. 
Yeah, but he had a, a window there. He was open for a first down, just like you said, overthrew him. Sten Bruno back to punt. What a name that is for the boxers. A very oh. high snap is over his head. Sten picks it up and now he'll kick it away. A high kick, excellent recovery for Bruno. And it takes a good boxer bounce and will roll out of bounds at the 26 yard line of Lexington. Good composure there by Bruno to recover the high snap. That could have been disastrous for the boxers. Yeah, yeah that was an excellent job. He was very cool under the pressure. Luckily, there was really no rush, Brian, for exactly. the um, punter. Yes, yes, he had plenty of time. Just go back there, collect the ball up, and um, do like a free kick. Yeah. Six oh nine left to go in the first quarter. Still scoreless here at Marciano Stadium between the Lexington Minutemen and your Brockton Boxers. Trips to the far side, one lone wideout to the near side, and it's Bianchi in the shotgun yet again. A handoff as Bianchi got wrapped up still on his feet before tumbling down was number three that is Tristan Quander. Well I tell you that was a great play by Devin Fortes because if he didn't make that tackle he was going to the outside and I didn't see a lot of no. um, boxes in front of him. And if he had any speed he was going to the house. Exactly. Bianchi dropping way back to pass short pass to Quander is complete, but he doesn't gain much, maybe half a yard on the play. Yeah, that was sort of like a screen pass. Um, the Lexington offensive line let the defense rush the quarterback, and then the receiver was waiting for him. And he had a few blockers in front of him, but it was a nice, um, nice play by the boxes to contain it. Four receivers yet again for the Minutemen. Bianchi in the shotgun. Now getting some last second instruction from the Minuteman sideline. Quander splits out, picks up a blocker and a quick screen pass before he is absolutely swamped by the boxers defense. It's a gain of maybe four and that'll bring up fourth down for the Minuteman. Yeah, and that was a tackle by committee. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Brockton boxers jumped off, just closed that whole uh, lane, yeah. shut him down. And going for it on fourth and three are the Minutemen, and we might have a timeout here. Oh, momentary stop. Bianchi in the shotgun, four receiver set, fourth and three. Trying to draw the boxers off sides. Let's see the discipline of this young boxers team. Bianchi, quick screen. Oh! Oh, oh! oh my God, that was bone crushing. You know, that... That was split second timing yes. there because if the flag went up, I mean, you know, it was very close, but it was a great play by yes. the Brockton defender there, number two. Yeah, he timed that perfectly because he yes. waited just until yes. he yes. made contact with the ball before yes. he drilled him. And that was David Belsius with the excellent timing there. Turnover on downs, the boxers take over. Michael Norman back in the huddle for the second time tonight. 424 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Box has got great field position in Lexington territory. Norman dropping back to pass. He lofts one to number 16. Complete and a touchdown. Boxers. That is Isaiah Laguerre. And the Boxers have drawn first blood here in the first quarter of this young season. That was a perfect throw by Michael Norman. I mean, he just tear dropped it right out there for Isaiah to just catch it in stride. Here's the replay. And you see him just drop back and just drop it right over his shoulder. Feathered perfect in timing. In for an easy touchdown. Yeah, that was great concentration by the uh, receiver. Put his long arm out there, took that ball in, and took it right to the house. Great play by the quarterback and the receiver. Great timing. And that was Gabe Van Eamon on the busted coverage for the Minutemen as the boxers line up to attempt the extra point. Carlin's Gene to attempt. Kick is up. The kick is good. The boxers seven, the Minutemen nothing. And with 4.18 left in the first quarter, Brian, 
That was quite the drive on one that, play by the boxers. That was an excellent drive. I mean, you're right. It was one play. Um, they just really, that was a perfect call by Peter Colombo to um, catch the defenders unprepared. Now, we don't have the, it's early in the season. I'm sure we'll get the height and weight of our ball players, but he's a big target there, uh, number 16. How you pronounce that last name? Laguerre. Laguerre? Laguerre. Laguerre, yes. He's a nice big target. And Coming you can from see a he can very hold athletic family. Okay. So it's Norman to Laguerre for give or take 30 yards. And the boxers draw first blood. to kick it away to the Minutemen. And Gina low kick will end up at the 26 yard line. Immediately going down was Number 31. You know, Kevin Jean. Matt, I, I could no see a I, I could see a big 200 pound lineman maybe falling down, but he looked like he could run a little bit. Yeah, that that. that. Just, I thought immediately he might be hurt when that ball hit his stomach. Immediately um, going down, but he ran right off the field. Yeah, you saw a reaction from the crowd. Like, what are you doing? Let's see some action. And and <laughs> and uh, Brockton uh, faithful here. Yes, they booed that that. That play. That play. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going to add any adjectives because you know I mean, it's good, good for that. It's stuff. good for the boxers. He could have been <laughs> five or ten yards off field. That Trips was, to the uh, far uh, side. Uh, Low snap handled by Bianchi. He rolls out. He's hit but spins off it. Now back to the near side. Bianchi spinning and able to get across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Very athletic moves by the ballerina, Anthony Bianchi. And good job by Devin Forts to slow him down disrupt his uh, his lane. Bianchi in the gun yet again, trips to the far side. Another low snap and the handoff to number three. He's wrapped up and he will be tackled for a loss. Tristan Quander on the carry for the Minutemen. Yeah, the, the Minutemen, they have a problem. They don't have a big bruising back. They've got little back, so you know, and you can see so far it's been a lot of passing, but they haven't been too too uh, keen on the passing. And another problem is their offensive line just is not really holding up well to the Brockton's defensive line. Bianchi back to pass, looking over the middle, complete to number two. He rolls out to the near side before he's hit by three boxers, finally going down at the 37-yard line. Jack Marson on the carry, and or on the reception, rather. Yeah, when Trevon Cadaro Goodwin was the last boxer to, to bring him to the ground. Yeah, great effort by the receiver to get that first down. Continue this Lexington drive. Three receivers to the far side. Bianchi rolling out, he's hit by number 51 of the boxers, now throwing, and it falls incomplete, I believe. Now, he was under some pressure, and if he, if he, that's why the pass wasn't that thrown well because the receiver was open. Stephen if he could, Bow on the pressure yeah, for if, the boxer. Exactly. If he could have zipped that pass in there, the because um, the receiver had to come back for the pass and it was low near the ground. And that's because of the pressure of the Brockton defense. A new running back in the game for the Minutemen. Bianchi pitches it out to said back. I believe that's number 21 who is Matt, pushed out. Yeah, Matt Pesateri. Yeah. He's the one that um got the kickoff return before. But he's a running back. The one that's been doing most of the running is, is number three, uh, who's a slot receiver and also a cornerback. That's Tristan Conder. Pusateri to the right of Bianchi this time. Bianchi rolling out. 
to the far side, airs it out. He's got a man and throwing it just off the mark. It falls on the white paint on the Lexington sideline. Yeah, that was a great effort by the quarterback to get that ball all the way downfield with serious pressure on him. left in the first quarter, 7-0 Boxers. The Minutemen lining up to punt. It's fourth and about six to go for Lexington. Low snap. The punt is a low and a perfect spiral bouncing at the 23-yard line. Ooh, a flag thrown in. Still on his feet is number 12 of the Boxers. That's yeah. Devin Fortes and he's finally wrapped up. Yeah, you're blocking the back by, uh, who's that, number 12. Uh, Devin Forts, so that's gonna go back. Two and a half to go in the first quarter. The boxers will be at or around the 15 yard line. Walking the back against Brockton. Ah, oh, that's the 13. First and 10 at the 13 yard line, so the longest field so far for the boxers. Norman under center with three receivers, two split out to the near side. The handoff is, oh, what a run, powering through the line is number 25, or 36 rather, that's Derek Williams. And Merced, Merced, if he didn't stop him, he was going. Definitely going to he the house. Still, he'd still be running now. Quick snap. Right back to Williams, and he's up to around the 28 yard line. And that'll be enough for a boxer first down, giving him a little bit of breathing room on the back end. Two receivers, uh, three receivers rather, two to the far side. Norman fakes the handoff, now throws complete to number 16. He's got a first down and more heading towards midfield. He's pushed out at the 48. That is Isaiah Laguerre again, and he's having himself quite the first half. Yeah, yes, Laguerre did a nice um, pattern that he ran, and he ran to the open spot, and the quarterback found him and connected. Yeah, that was a nice, um, I, I will say this. I love the balance of Brockton. This is only the first game of the season. It is a, a non-conference um, opponent, but the balance with passing and uh, running. First and 10 at the 48 and a half. A handoff to Williams. He gets across midfield to the 49 of Lexington. A minute and 30 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Brian, that'll drive a defense crazy when, when the offense is very balanced, has a balanced attack and so they don't know what's gonna come at them. Yeah, because many um, high school teams, they either have a running game or they have a passing game. Exactly, um, and, and in this case, Lexington has basically a passing game. Has a passing game. And the, hasn't really shown much, but their running game isn't that much either. They just ain't got big backs or a big offensive line. Second and about eight to go for the boxers. One lone wide out in motion. It is Williams. He gets the end around handoff and he's brought down from behind. But the Minuteman defender might have pushed him across the first down marker. It'll be close. Yeah, Justin Shuri. That was nice. Um, Run by Laguerre. Yeah. The third and about one quarterback keeper by Norman. He's got plenty for first down and breaking loose all the way to the 28 yard line of the Minutemen was Michael Norman out of nowhere. And Ben Burham, with a shoestring tackle, brought him Otherwise, down. Otherwise, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> First down as the boxers march up the field. Norman under center of a 
timeout called by the Brockton Boxers. Now Brockton's, they've had about three plays I've seen that we've seen that, that could, those could have been touchdowns, but because of um, Lexus' defense, they was able to um, get themselves together and make the, make the tackle. Otherwise, we might have more points on the board right now. Well, guys, there's a noticeable absence on the sideline this year. Armand Colombo will be at some games, but he's decided to take a step back from full-time coaching with his son, Peter. Uh, Peter's on the sideline still, but Armand has decided to take a step back, and it is a very noticeable absence on the boxer sideline. It is, Matt, because just a few plays earlier, I was looking for um, Coach Armand Colombo, and I didn't see him down there, so... You know, like you said, he's decided to take a few steps back, give his son some, a little bit more breathing room. Not that he wasn't giving him breathing room before, but he, his son knows that he's not on the sideline. So, and it's funny, I'm looking at, at Coach Peter Colombo, and look, he walks up and down the field just like his dad. Even though it's a father-son relationship, it's a little bit tough when you're looking at a coach who's one of the all-time winningest coaches in Massachusetts high school history. He won a couple of Super Bowls here with Brockton High. Quick screen pass complete to number 16. He's got a first down and some room to run before he finally hits the far sideline. And that is Isaiah Laguerre again. Yeah, Laguerre's, Laguerre's having an outstanding game. Yeah, that was a nice nice juke move that he did on the, his defender to uh, break free and get some more yardage out of the play. Yes. Five seconds, the boxers will have one final play in this first quarter as they march toward the end zone. Lone wide out to the near side is Laguerre. Flags thrown, the play blown dead. Uh, it's gonna be too many men against the boxers, I believe. They're counting them now. And the refs made a mistake, they wave it off. And you can see we got a big crowd out here for the first game of the season. Packed house here at Marciano Stadium. And instead of purchasing tickets tonight, these fans were asked to bring a can of food for admission to uh, donate to local food banks. And uh, I believe the Charity Guild was one of the beneficiaries as well. Yeah, I noticed the, the, the um, food bank right outside the gate. They were collect People were bringing cans of food for the needy, which is um, great for the community. First and 10 for the boxers, three seconds on the clock. Norman hands off to Williams. He's got a hole and wrapped up the ball's out. And they're gonna say he's down at the three yard line. It would have been a touchdown for Laguerre if they didn't blow it. Forward progress stopped at the two and a half, three Yeah, good line. hit. You'll see by the uh, Lexington defender here. Now you see the replay. And right there. And he was down and he just kinda yeah, that was Threw more of him shoulder. losing the football. Yeah, yeah. So that's the end of the first quarter. Excellent effort by the boxers so far. Yeah, very up-tempo for the boxers. Like Brian said, they've been mixing up their plays the whole first quarter, and um, they're leading 7-0. Yeah, and it's encouraging to see, um, see the tenacity of the team as far as offensively and defensively because they've been able to stop any... any um, momentum of Lexington Minutemen and they've been able to keep their own momentum going. Well guys, let's talk schedule. Last second dropout. Catholic Memorial decided they didn't want to face the Boxers. That would have been week four. So the Boxers have a bye week and only six games to play before the playoffs uh, after the, the first seven weeks of the regular season. Gee, that's, uh, that's really tough. I'm surprised that Catholic Memorial would bow out it's very good for the boxers. Those Catholic schools are tough. So yeah. now instead of yeah. BC High, Severian, and CM back to back to back, now you only got to worry about BC High and Severian. Yeah, well, and I'm, CM I'm, with their new coach, they've really been up and coming the last couple of years, Brian. And I'm not surprised because Bonstable did the same thing we, years ago. You know, Bonstable didn't want to play Brockton and they, they and Walton. Yes. Yeah, so they're not the first to do it. Quick handoff to Williams. He's across the goal line for a touchdown for the boxers. Derek Williams, and that will bring it to 13 to nothing. Brockton on top of Lexington. Well, I tell you, 
right now. You'll see it on replay. That Brockton offensive line is pushing the Lexington line backwards. I mean, the the, the, uh, the ball carrier didn't even fall down. He he walked in. He walked in, and there was a big push there by big number 76, Jonathan Vilmont, open up that um that lane. Gene to attempt the extra point. Ball is snapped, the kick is up, and the kick is good, 14 to nothing. Gene perfect on the night, as you can see the lights really begin to take effect here as the sun has fully set. Atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. Only in Brockton, you get the best in Brockton. That's it, city of champions. City of champions. At Rocky Marciano Stadium. And this is going to be getting into Lexington's head a little bit. <laughs> so the rest of the boxers' schedule, of course, tonight, home against Lexington. Next week, they're away versus Natick, a very tough game facing the boxers. Next Friday night, 6 o'clock kickoff at that one. Then they've got BC High, Severian back-to-back -back at home. Travel down to Fall River. A week after that to Durfee High School and New Bedford at home the following week. And of course, Bridgewater Raynham is Thanksgiving this year will be at Marciano Stadium. Yeah, and, and I was kind of surprised. I opened up the paper this afternoon and saw that Bridgewater Raynham got trounced by, I'm not sure who it was. Um, I was surprised. It was it was a weird team. Yeah, it was an, it was, I, I was a team like, that was wow. out there. They beat Bridgewater. Well, get Rain. the research team on it. Yes. Gene high end over end kick falling at the 23 yard line, and wrapped up immediately a return of about five yards for the Minutemen. That's Luke Butler on the return for the Minutemen. Nice tackle there by number 29. That long layoff falls right before the Catholic Conference swing. It's right after Natick High School and then they're off until the 28th of September when they face BC High at home. If you could pick any part of the schedule to be off, it's right before the Catholic Conference comes to town. Get that much more work in. Yeah, definitely so. And to uh, heal up a little bit, the bumps and bruises. Flag thrown number 15 on the screen pass reception. He's brought down at the 30. And that is Mason Hatfield, a sophomore slot receiver, 5'6", 140. Well, you know, Brockton, um, Lexington is, is ranked number seven, you know, with, with, with um, a record of nine and two last year. Of course, they also had what Matt Campbell told me was the best high school athlete he's seen in the last 20 years. Wow. As their quarterback. Well, he's gone. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> it's always fun to try to guess and predict what teams are going to do. The Eagles and Patriots in the NFL, of course, immediately favored to return to the Super Bowl because they were there last year. And the Patriots lost pretty much all their wide receivers. Yeah, it's going to be a big test for the Patriots this year in their passing game. Speaking of quarterbacks that are no longer on teams, Brockton High legend graduating in the class, the greatest class in Brockton High School history. 2011, Paul Moraz is in the house tonight. He was probably the first quarterback that I've seen that Peter Colombo really let him open up through the air. Usually the boxers ground and pound all day, but even tonight, Isaiah Laguerre has had some pretty big receptions for Brockton. Yeah, Norman's been doing an outstanding job getting him the ball. Third and a long three to go for the Minutemen. Two receivers split to each side. Bianchi in the gun, low snap. He's gonna keep it himself, charging across the line and he is going to fall forward across the first down 
marker and to the 40 yard line it'll be a first down minimum. Nice job by Lexington's offensive line to give the quarterback just enough space, a hole to uh, get in there and get that first down. Yankee play action, it's tipped and up and intercepted by the boxers. Brockton bringing it back the other way, it's number 33 headed towards the promised land. Now you know, Brian, why they do tip drills in football. Oh, most definitely, definitely. I believe that was Trayvon Cordaro Goodwin, sorry to cut you off, Brian, on the big interception. As we take a look at that replay right in the middle of the field, it was tipped. And play number 32 with a pick. And it bounced into the arms of number 32. That's Aaron Quite. The tip was by Cordaro Goodwin. Good hands by Goodwin. A nice tip by, uh, by the other, other guy. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice tip by the Brockton defender. 33. The tip by Cordaro Goodwin, the pick by Quite. And excellent starting field position yet again for the Brockton Boxers and Michael Norman. Norman pitching out to number 36, who's bobbing and weaving all the way down to the 20 yard line. Derek Williams. Derek's having a good game. Yeah. He's already has one touchdown. Him yeah. and Legary. Yeah, he Every did a nice job each. right there cutting back inside to get another five or six yards. Second and about three to go from the 20 yard line for the boxers, two receivers both to the far side, Norman under center with two backs. They give to number five who goes right up the gut. First down boxers all the way to the five yard line is Jamil Atkinson. And that was a great tackle. And matter of fact, that was the only place they could go is low to get the big guy down because he was ready to go into the end zone. Yeah, and that was um, number 12, Gabe Van Eman and uh, Tristan Quander. And Williams the has his second touchdown of the game. Well, who saw this one coming, guys? The boxers up by three touchdowns with 8.34 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, I think the, the um, box is starting to wear down. It's early in the game, but they're starting to wear down this smaller Lexington team. Well, I'll tell you, the Boston Globe's comments were um, Friday night's Lexington at, at, the, at Brockton. Uh, minus Sal Freilich. Oh, here's a replay. Oh, here's the kick, actually. Gene back to attempt his third kick on the night. Good on the first two. The ball is snapped. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Gene, 3-3 three three on the night. 21 to nothing. Brockton over the Minutemen. Yeah, we still got a lot of time left in this second quarter. Yes, we do. But as I was saying, uh, the Globe predicted Brockton to win. It said minus Sal Freilich, Ben Quint. The Minutemen will likely not put 42 points on the board like in 2017. But Anthony Bianca and the Minutemen will score. They haven't. And they could contain Brockton's receivers, Tayshawn Glenn Doherty. But their pick is Brockton to win. But they haven't been able to stop anybody. Well, the big players for Brockton so far has been Derek Williams, Isaiah Laguerre, and Michael Norman for the boxers. I wouldn't quite say unstoppable, but pretty close to it for those three. Yep. 21 points and still eight minutes and 34 seconds left in the second quarter. You can say Brockton has dominated this game. Yes, they have. Now another thing we don't normally see in high school, a kicker that's three for three. Yes. Carlin's gene perfect on the night. Looks like he has a good set of legs. As this one high end over end at the 19 yard line by the Minutemen all the way up to the 35. The ball might have come out, but Lexington recovers. And they'll start at the 35 yard line. A nice tackle there by Brandon Daly. Eight and a half to go in the second quarter. It is 21 to nothing. Boxers over the Minutemen. 
See, when you got a 21 nothing lead, still a lot of time in the second quarter, you, that gives your defense freedom to try a few things, take some chances on another, a few other things. Well, you can let off the gas a little bit. You don't quite have to floor it, but you still have to accelerate it. And it's a touch. Oh! Falling, and by high school rules, the play is stopped. Yes. Fumble recovered by number 12, Devin Forts. Yeah, that was a alert play there. Yeah, but actually it wasn't a fumble. No, it wasn't bad it, execution. No, it, it, no, it was, was a lateral. It was a lateral. Here we go. It was a lateral. He throws it behind him. See, right there. Oh, he laterals. Yeah. See, there and yeah. just bad execution, it. not a good lateral. It wasn't a good lateral. It was too no. high. Yeah. And Fortes having a good night on the defensive side of the ball. Lexington Minutemen so far in the first half. The gifts keep on coming. First and 10 from the 19 and a half. For the boxers, Norman under center and we're gonna see him air it out here a little bit. Four receivers set two to each side. Norman back to pass, pressured, throwing as he hits the ground, completes to number 29, he's up to the 10. It'll be another first down all the way down to the eight yard line. Wow, did you see how that first Lexington defender came up to tackle and he just bounced off of him? He sure did. Sten Bruno hit him hard and was like, no. Nah. He was not going to be denied no, here, for getting that first watch down. Watch here, Brian. Yep. You see. Right there. And good defense. Okay, almost, he kind of slipped took off him of down. Him. Yeah. But he's, he's a big target. Yeah. First and goal to go for the boxers from the nine yard line. The boxers line shifting and we're gonna have a timeout called here by the Minutemen, 7.39 to go in the second quarter. I think that's a good timeout for Lexington for the coach to call. He really needs to talk to his uh, defense I'm sure some of them are down, but uh, he's got to let them know you just can't give up. We got a lot of football to play. That's it. And they don't want to get trounced. No. Which they're already well on their way to that. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first first and goal for the boxers tonight. Yeah, because all their, um, all their touchdowns have been, you know, aired out a little bit. First and goal to go, 739. The boxers knocking again. Two backs, it is Williams and Jamil Atkinson. They give to Williams right up the gut. He'll get to about the four. Or rather, that's number 25, the Johnny Horn. Yeah, very, very tight formation for the boxes there. It looked like a running play. I guess Coach Colombo wants to just shove it down their throat. Horn again right up the gut, and he's in for yet another boxer. Touchdown, 7.15 to go. And the boxers with their foots on the throat of the Lexington Minutemen. Derek Williams has his third touchdown of the night. That was A.J. Horn on the touchdown run for Brockton. Was it? Okay. Here we go. Yes, it was. Another great job by the offensive line. The kick is up and the kick is good. Carlin's Gene, four of four on the night. And that means 28 to nothing. Yeah, I like the look of this kicker that we have, kicking these um, extra points. Yes. He's consistent. Yes. So that, that's a good sign that we got a good kicking game this season. Because we all are familiar with um, um, once, once the teams would score, they'd always go for two, two because they had no reliance on the kicking team. Exactly. The kicking game. Exactly. Well, if the boxers take one thing from the first half, it should be that a couple of hundred years ago, there was a team in Lexington called the Minutemen, and they were down big. They were almost out of it. And they came back, threw some tea leaves in the Boston Harbor, <laughs> and then came back and created the country as we know it. 
of America. <laughs> so you never know what's coming after halftime. Never know. Never know. <laughs> nice analogy. I like it. Well, last year was great because we're up in Lexington, and it was me and the seven-time award-winning director and producer, Nubi Rato. And we opened the game by saying, we're here where it all started. And if there's two things that are one in trenches, it's war and football. Carlin's Jean back to kick this one off to the Lexington Minutemen. Two receivers standing at about the 11-yard line. High end over end kick. And botched by the Minutemen. It's taken by number one. He's hit. Late flag thrown in. Look at the arm on the ref. That flag flew about 30 yards. <laughs> he could be a quarterback the way he threw that thing. Number 21 on the run back. That is Matt Pusateri. Yeah, see if they, we can see that's an illegal block on the back right there on number 28, Luke yeah. Butler. Seven oh nine to go in the second quarter. Twenty-eight to nothing. Boxers over the Minutemen here on opening night of the twenty eighteen high school football season. Four wideouts. Bianchi in the backfield. The give to number two went absolutely nowhere. Tristan Quander on the end around, brought down in the backfield. Yeah, he just went right through that offensive line, knocked players out of the way to get to the running back. That'll bring up about a second and 15 for the Minutemen. See, if, if, if your line, offensive line, can't handle that defensive line, it's going to be a long, long at evening for your offense. Long evening for your quarterback, running backs. Bianchi back to pass, complete to number five. He is hit immediately, balls out. Are they gonna, they're gonna say the he was down. That was Massey Merced getting absolutely decked. By yeah. David Bacellus. Let's see, let's Bacellus. see on him. Let's see if it was caught. Gee, it looked like he took one or two steps. That was close. That was very close. I am shocked that he popped right up after that one. Yeah, because he was bent like a pretzel a little bit. And that will make it a third and 15 for the Minutemen. Timeout Timeout called by Lexington. 6.15 to go, the Minutemen. Let's see it again on replay. Let's see if he caught this. There's the catch, one, two. That? I, the ball was loose. Okay, yeah. that's what they're saying. It was loose before, once he took that first and step, that, it was loose. Well, once he got that initial contact, that initial contact jogged the ball out before he hit the ground. So. And he didn't take two steps yet. It was like he took one step, all of a sudden it, the ball was bobbling. and So, good play by the referee, let's time, see. see. He catches so the there's ball. there's possession. And then he he's hit. There's a step. And it pops but loose right there. Now he's juggling, yeah. You and can see already, it right already, there is yeah. loose. Before yeah. he hits the ground. Nice so job on Insta Replay. Matt, who's down there in the um, the booth? I believe it is Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. He's always delivering. That brings up third and 15 for the Minutemen. Screen pass complete. Hit immediately, spinning off the initial hit. Was number 18 for the Minutemen. That is Justin Siri. And again, Brockton's going to get excellent field position. I was about to say the same thing. Yep. Yeah, they should be probably inside the 50. Yes. Maybe about the 42, 45. Well, let's not forget the first Lexington punt only went about 25 yards. And we don't know what we're going to have for a run back from um, number 12. Devin Forts. Yep, who's had a great game so far. The Lexington punter at the goal line steps up to about the five. A side winding kick at the 40 and it goes out of bounds at the 42. 42 yard line. Boxes will have the ball at the 42 yard line of Lexington. First down. 
So not the best starting field position of the night, but nothing to complain about. Hey, anytime you can get the ball inside the other opponent, opponent's territory, that's a plus. First and 10 for the boxers from the 43 yard line. Four receivers trips to the near side for Brockton Norman in the shotgun. He's gonna air it out to the far side. Are we gonna see pass interference? It looked like it. Yeah, it was. No flag thrown. I think that's a little bit of the boxers are up by 28 points. Lexington hasn't yet scored tonight, so. Here you see it right here. And you see contact, right a whole lot of contact there. there. Spinning around. Ooh, I don't know, the shoulder. defender's arm was on the receiver's yes. shoulder there. That was Navon Reed, the intended receiver for Brockton. And he comes to the sideline for a little breather. 5.23 left in the second quarter. Second and 10 for the boxers. Three receivers set to off to the far side. And that was Horn right up the gut, a gain of a couple. It'll be third and about eight. Number 50's getting up very slowly for around the minute, man. He looked like he took a hit. Across the five minute left, five minute mark, excuse me, in the first half. Brockton, foot on the throat of the minute, man. Laguerre, the lone wide out to the far side. Norman under center. And Norman now splitting out to the far sideline. Quick throw is incomplete, but flags are thrown. Two flags on the play. I think. Uh, they came in before the pass. receiver downfield. That's what it looked like to me. Back the boxers up. For an incredible plot twist, Lexington has declined the penalty to give the boxers a fourth and eight. Yeah, that's a good move right there an by excellent Lexington. Excellent eye yes. yeah. by B Mad Brian Radden, uh, Brian Madden, excuse me. Ineligible receiver downfield. Yep, that's what I saw. Boxers lining up to punt. Flags thrown in, it'll be a false start against Brockton. And that'll give them a little bit more room to work with on the kick. That'll give the Boxers about a fourth and 13. Box is getting a tad sloppy the last couple of plays there. Um, not concentrating and two penalties in a row. Kick is a high end over end kick. Falling at the 20, good Brockton bounce to the 15. And Lexington's receiver is absolutely swamped. He dragged, a bunch, of, he dragged a bunch of Brockton boxers with him for, for about five yards. Yeah, that was a good effort. That was a good effort by number 18. Yes. Justin Siri on the reception for Lexington. Folks, the charity field food pantry is completely overwhelmed by the tremendous support tonight for the Kent Food Drive. We collected over 1,500 kids tonight. Let's hear it. Incredible work put on by the charity guild here tonight. 
As we mentioned a bit earlier, free tickets, but you're asked to bring a can of food. All the fans at Brockton High School have far succeeded that. 1,500 plus cans of food to donate to the Charity Guild. I'm sure Nancy Gustafsson is very happy. I saw her down underneath the bleachers from um, Charity Guild. They do an awesome job. I hope they've got a U-Haul out there. I'm sure they've <laughs> got whatever vehicle they need to move exactly. all those, all those, uh, uh, the, the, those canned goods. Canned and stuff. goods. Yeah. Yes. 3:50 to go in the first half. The marching Brockton Boxer band getting ready for their first halftime show of the season. Bianchi splitting out to the far side now, throwing long oh, over my. the middle. He's got his man. Now is number two on the long reception, Jack Marson. And that a gain of what certainly looks like 50 yeah. yards. You'll see the receiver ran a post pattern, and they kind of just ignored him. He's one of the little guys out there, but he was open and caught it. I'll let you get that one. That is a 50-yard reception the, the, for Marson. The, the, which one? The defender who caught, who tackled him. What was his number? Number 35. Go ahead and pronounce that oh, name. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not even going to attempt. But great play. I mean, great. Um, he came from behind and, and got the tackle, but you shouldn't have let him go. Got to stay with your man. Yes. I'm going to go with Achinuiki. Winodi. Winodi. What'd you I'll say, Winodi? Just Winodi. call him Winodi. Yes. Yes. Well, we could Archie Winodi. I mean, you know. There you go. Archie we've, Winodi. We've had some brutal names over the last we have. couple uh, years. Uh, last couple of years and the last couple of decades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it hasn't gotten easier. And wait, Miles and I, we have butchered <laughs> names <laughs> going back to the to the nineties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bian and it hasn't Bianchi, gotten easier. Quarterback keeper heading to the near sideline. He's to the play. ten, the five, still on his feet, heading towards the goal line. He's going to be marked just shy. All right, touchdown for the Minutemen, but flags are thrown. They should be bringing that one back. Let's we'll see what the white hat has to Certainly say. Certainly looks that way. Holding on the defense, and the touchdown will stand. It seemed like Brockton was out of position on that particular play. So the Minutemen on the board with 3.21 to go in the first half. Bianchi on the big quarterback keeper. Great run by the quarterback, Sean O'Brien. run of about 24 yards for Bianchi. And now lining up for a two-point conversion of the minute. Wasn't that Bianchi? Bianchi? That was Anthony Bianchi. Who? Bianchi keeping it himself Lexington. yet again. And he's the in. Two-point conversion is good. Number seven, right? It's Number Brockton. <laughs> so Bianchi two has a the first point game. for all eight <laughs> points for the Minutemen. And that touchdown was good for Lexington's just morale. That They got some points on the board. You know, they've been having a tough first half here, and they was able to score a touchdown. Yes. Going to give a shout-out to Johnny Mack, John McDonald. Doing his best this? be doing his best old-school DJ Miles Jackson and, impression. And what's my man's name? Johnny Mack. DJ Johnny Mack, right here. <laughs> Spinning the hits out here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. And I see Matt over here like he wants to wobble. <laughs> you wobble? I don't wobble. <laughs> I electric slide, I cha-cha slide, and I Cupid shuffle. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of my dancing ability. All right, very good. Any song that explicitly tells me what I have to do. <laughs> Mad Dog, did I see you out on the dance floor at, at Mike the Postman's uh, wedding? You did. Did you I did. see you out there? Yes. There were some other factors that played into that that 
Yeah. Was it beverages? You know, there were beverages. <laughs> there were beverages. Cold beverages. A few beverages. Good reception by that's AJ Horn. And he's brought down at the 28 yard line. 313 in the first half remaining. And Brockton needs to keep the momentum going. And uh, not let Lexington get any any momentum going with uh, some quick stops and getting the ball back with a short amount of time left. Norman in the gun, or under center rather, two back set. They give to Williams, he's got some room on the far side, gets around one tackle, loses the ball, it's out, and Lexington has it. And then a pile up, Lexington's sideline thinks they have it. As crowd control has ensued by the guys in the striped shirts and Lexington does indeed take possession. That was a case running back, he had he saw the, saw the end zone. All he needs to break one more tackle, and he was just carrying the ball too loosely. Yes. I think he tried switching hands right at the end. Ooh, just knocked it no, out. He I tried it cutting out. back, and it just, just He wasn't loose. holding it tightly. So Lexington ball, three minutes to go. I'm sure it won't be a good halftime discussion in the boxers' locker room, seeing as the events of the last couple of minutes. Yeah, hopefully he learned his lesson. Even though you're out in the open field, you still got to keep that ball tucked in. Unless you're some, I'm going old school now, unless you're somebody like Gail Sayers, who used to take the football, oh, and yeah. once he get in the open, yes. he had that football out there, and he used to drive the coaches crazy, but he barely ever fumbled. He, he rarely just fumbled. rarely fumbled. Slightly different than the Deshaun Jackson in the last couple of years, yes. where he finds the open field and drops it at the one yard line. This is an important stop for Brockton because they need to stop the, stop the momentum, the momentum yes. of yes. the Minutemen and keep them from um, putting some more numbers up on the board. That's Quander brought down at the line of scrimmage, second and 10 for the Minutemen. Stacking the far side. Bianchi hands off, or keeps it himself, flag thrown. Bianchi breaking loose on the far sideline. He's across the original line of scrimmage in a gate of about three. And again, flags thrown. <laughs> Looked like it was holding on the offense. We're going over and talking to the uh, Minutemen coaches. Here's the replay. That's holding number, right yeah, there, number 75. Number 75. I saw holding. Matt, you might, I'm not sure if you're old enough to remember Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds from the Adam Sandler version of The Longest Yard. Ah, see, and we can go, me and Brian go back further. Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. With Jackie Gleason. And um, oh, oh! interception, but flags are thrown, and they're going to mark the boxer down at the seven yard line, but flags thrown. But what? Holding against the Minutemen, and the boxers will take possession. What a reception there. Yeah, what concentration? Concentration, exactly. And they've got a turnover chain on the sidelines. Seven First down. Watch this concentration. He defends well. You're going to see right here. He's, He's already on the ground. The ball is short. Right there. He picks it up and he pushes it up in the air, and then it lands on his chest. Number two. David Belsius. Yes. And he's got the big turnover chain on the boxer sideline, a la the Miami oh, Hurricanes. And he keeps his hands underneath the yes. ball. It doesn't make contact with the ground. Not at all. 
Even if it did touch the turf. Yeah, he caught it. I, there wasn't a ref in the area that could make that determination. Well, it did. <laughs> now busting open, I believe that is Williams. Out to the 21 yard line, that is David Williams. Now the boxers back on the right track after a couple of late mistakes here in the first half. They lead 28 to eight, 150 and counting left in the second quarter. First and 10 for Brockton. Give to Williams again, this time stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Might have fallen forward for a couple. It'll be second and about eight. Generous spot, it's gonna be second and seven for the boxers. One oh five to go in this first half. Two back set, Norman under center. Pitch out this time to Williams. He finds a little hole, gets across the 30 to the 33, and that will be a boxer first down. Yeah, Williams did a nice job to cut right up field when he had the opportunity to get that first down. There's a look in the truck. Great job, fellas. Mike the Postman Simmons. Paul Mandeville hiding just to the left of the opening. Norman to pass. He's hit as he throws, and it comes loose. The boxers will have it at the 10-yard line. They're going the wrong way about 15 yards back. And that was great presence of mind to make sure he just didn't try and pick it up and run with it. He just fell on the ball, got control of the ball. Yep, smart play. Smart play. At this point, I think you just got to take a knee with 27 oh, seconds to go. Yes, but he did, 54 was, was um, very smart to just yeah. fall on that ball in lieu of trying to pick it up and do something. Yeah. With Matthew it. Goldstone. Especially when you're close to your own end zone. Yes. Leave it to someone with the name Matthew to make a very smart decision. Well, there's always one. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so it's third and a country mile, third and forget about it for the boxers. Laguerre to the far side, number four is the receiver to the near side. That's Ted Tessa. They give to Williams, he gets to the corner and he's dropped at the 10. And, and a timeout called. Good. Timeout time called by Lexington. That's a good decision by the Lexington no, sideline. Yes. Yeah. 20 seconds to go. Four, seven, three. Two, three, five, four, seven, three. Congratulations. Bring a winning ticket up to the booth. Lots of familiar faces in the house Number tonight. I believe four, that is three. Alex Moretta. Yes, it is. Another member of one of the greatest classes in history. Alex was a beast. Low snap on the punt. It's almost blocked. A high kick. Takes an excellent Brockton bounce back across the 50 and still going all the way to the 44 to the 43 yard line. And that's where it's touched down, seven seconds to go. Excellent escapability yes. by the boxers tonight. Yeah, because uh, Lexington, they put a lot of pressure on the punter and he kept his cool, went through with his motion and kicked a nice punt. So Brockton's going to go into the locker room and regroup, get back focused, and uh, come back out with the same intensity that they started the game with. Speaking of dances that Mad Dog Matt Nelson knows how to do, Whip and Nene is one of them. It happens to be one of the favorite songs of Mike the Postman Simmons' five-year-old daughter, <laughs> affectionately referred to as Munchkin. 
All right, Little Munchkin. Bianchi rolling out, now cutting back to the far side. He's running back, last play of the first half. He throws it into the Lexington yes. sideline and that will wrap it up. For the first half, it is 28 to eight. A 20 point lead for the Brockton Boxers in the first game of the season. Minus the last couple of minutes of the second quarter, you can't ask for a better half of football by the Brockton Boxers. Yes, yes, they, they definitely kept the aggression going throughout the first half. They had a little hiccup in the last five minutes, but outside of that, they controlled the, the, the rhythm of the game offensively and defensively. Yeah. I mean, yeah, real quick, though, I just yeah. want to mention that um, Derek Williams, two touchdowns, uh, Johnny Horn had one, and Laguerre had uh, had one. And Colin Jean, great job kicking four for with four, four points. On the night. Four for four. Yeah, two things in the first half of Brockton. They controlled the line on both sides and they made plays when they had to. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Lexington Minutemen and the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Jordan alongside Big Game, Miles Jackson, B Mad, Brian Madden for the kickoff to the 2018 football season for the Brockton Boxers. It has been quite the first half, 28 to eight. Boxers on top of the Minutemen. And guys, again, minus the first, the, the last couple of minutes in the first half where the boxers made a few mental errors and took their foot off the gas. You can't complain with the efforts of the Brockton boxers offense and especially their stifling defense. Yes, definitely, because they, they were very, um, I don't know, they were pretty good on both sides, you know, offensively and defensively. Miles has been talking about how their offensive line and defensive line have really held held their own. Yeah, if, if Brockton can show the promise all season, what, they, what they're doing tonight, I, I look for good things for Brockton because they got a good, strong quarterback. He's smart, he's got some big targets, and he's got some big running backs. So hopefully we're on the right track this year for um, Brockton High football. We got that big bye week coming up after next week when the boxers travel to Natick to play the Red Hawks. And then they get two weeks off and then they're here against BC High and Severian back to back. Of course, that bye week would have been filled with Catholic Memorial, who dropped the boxers as an opponent. Weymouth is also off the schedule this year. Normally one of the boxers' opponents, but they've been replaced by the Natick Red Hawks. Oh. Interesting. So a lot of changes for the boxers' schedule this year. Of course, Lexington added to the slate of opponents for last season. But and I think Lexington now uh, matches well against Brockton. Um, well, they did last year. They trounced us last year. But um, I, I think, uh, you know, they're a pretty good team up in the um, Northern Division. So we look forward to playing them every year. A.J. Horn lowering his head, getting to right about the 50-yard line. Depending on the spot, it might be a first down for the boxers. End of the third quarter, we'll talk about the controversy of the day with Nike and Colin Kaepernick, so stay tuned for that one. It is second and about a yard for the boxers. Horn with the gain of about nine. He's having himself a night. A Johnny Horn, yes he is. Norman under center. They give to Derek Williams. He's across the 50 and a couple of insurance yards all the way down to the 44-yard line for Derek Williams. Yeah, Derek Williams breaking tackles there, showing his determination to keep going. So they've started off the second half well with um, getting the first down, moving the sticks, and just trying to uh, continue to keep that aggression going put some more numbers on the board. The Minutemen wearing their road white jerseys, blue and gold trim the boxers in their new home black jerseys with phenomenally bright white numbers and maroon trim and the maroon helmet with the boxer decal on the side, flags thrown, the play is blown dead. It will most likely be a false start against the boxers. 
That'll bring up a first and 15 for Brockton. Uniforms just one of a few big changes here at Marciano Stadium. The lights are just phenomenal. The lights are outstanding. Bright, bright. It's like daylight. You know, they're comparable to um, the lights that we have on our streets now. Um, on my street yes. at night, it looks like daylight. The give was to Derek Williams. Back to about the original line of scrimmage, just shy. It'll be third and uh, second and 11, rather. Quick screen pass complete to number four. He's wrapped up immediately, falling forward was Ted Tessa. Yeah, Lexington was ready for that particular play right there. Yeah, Tessa's first reception of the night. Third and nine for Brockton. 7.18 to go in the third quarter. They lead by 20 points, 28 to eight over the Lexington Minutemen. Yeah, it's a smart idea for Coach Colombo to get as many receivers touches as you just called it's possible. See, we'll see what they can do. That's right. That's can they right. catch the football out there with, with people on them? Because, you know, a quarterback wants to know that he can count on his receivers. Exactly. Norman back to pass, throwing over the middle. Excellent reception there by number 81 of the boxers. That is Adamola Falei. Sorry on the butcher job on that one. Oh, that's all right. We're, we're used to it. Adamola filet. Yeah, not bad. I think I filleted that name. Yes. You it's see okay. right there, nice post pattern by um, number 81. He ran the perfect pattern. The ball came right to him. First and 10 for the boxers. Three receivers, Laguerre, the guy to watch on the far side. Williams, the lone man behind Michael Norman. Williams gets the carry, finding a hole up the middle just tripped up because he was just about open and gone. I don't know that I've seen someone able to gain speed as well as Derek Williams. Yeah, that's a good point. He goes from zero to 60, give Very or take a half a second. Second in a yard and a half, we'll call it two for the boxers. Norman under center, this time it is Jamil Atkinson and Williams in the backfield and now the boxers offensive line shifts to stack the left side. They give to Williams, he's hitting the backfield, gets out of the hit and falling forward has a first down for Brockton. They're saying fumble. They're saying Lexington and ball. Lexington has it. Lexington has I didn't see where it came out. <laughs> Big defensive play by Lexington if it stands, and it does. So first and ten for Lexington now. That's one of the, the brighter moments. Yard line. Uh, Matt, that's one of the brighter moments for the Lexington Lexington defense they up to this game. Yeah, they stopped um, Brockton's momentum because Brockton Brockton was driving. They're inside the 20, and um, we're threatening to score again. So Derek Williams, two fumbles today. I'm sure Coach Colombo will, you know, work on that as far as having him uh, protect the football a little oh, better. He definitely will. Bianchi in the backfield with trips to the far side, one lone wideout to the near side. Bianchi, quick screen pass is not caught on the far side by number 15, Mason Hatfield. And the boxers, even though it wasn't a backwards pass, which we saw earlier, that was a lateral that was not caught, so it's a fumble. Good awareness by the boxers to jump on the ball. Yes. Second and 10 for the Minutemen. Mm -hmm. 
men in motion. Bianchi. Little trickery handoff behind his back to number 21. And that is Matt Pusa Terry. Yeah, that was a nice little shovel pass, you know, handoff. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Brockton up big 28 to 8 over the Lexington Minutemen in the season opener here at Marciano Stadium. Bianchi in trouble. Gets around a few boxes, keeps it himself across the 20 before he is tackled by a committee of three boxers. Yeah, he tried the straight straight on, but that didn't help. They were coming in hard and heavy. Like you said, committee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fruitless uh for and for whatever reason, he tried, he tried to stay in bounds. Yeah. Yeah, he should have just ran out of bounds. Yeah. Well, credit Josiah Asari with the better part of the tackle on that one. Timeout called by the Brockton Boxers. Excellent work by our camera crew tonight, bringing you Phenomenal sights and sounds from Marciano Stadium. Yeah, they're catching all the action down there on the gridiron. And what a beautiful night for football. Yeah. I mean, the temperature is perfect. Um, you don't need a jacket, or you could have a jacket, depending on how you feel. It's comfortable. It's not downpouring. It's not which down. Which is a plus. Oh, which was yesterday. That storm that went through here yesterday was crazy. It was crazy. No flash floods. So last year, Brian, we're going to get your opinion on this, speaking of weather. Yes. Last season, we are at uh, facing BC High on Morrissey Boulevard. The coldest game perhaps ever on record at BCA was that year. Big game, Miles, me, Mike the Postman, Simmons, down on Morrissey Boulevard. Yes. It was raining oh, sideways. Yes. That was uh, BC? BC High, yep. Cold as anything, no room in the press box for the camera crew. <laughs> so what is the worst weather you remember calling a game in? Everett. Ever I'm Everett. <laughs> I was getting ready to say that. Everett. Oh, my God. We Everett. Froze. Oh, it was so cold. We're oh, out cold, there. wasn't We're, it? It was, it, 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 was, it was literally below zero. It Just was about, a good, yeah. you know, 20 degrees below zero. And we were out there, and it was reason miles peter and myself and we were yeah. out there and that How was that was, was that? one did peter have on shorts that because peter always wore shorts yeah but i think he had i think he had on pants that game yeah but it was um it was ridiculously cold quick side note amando walker jr number 58 one of the linemen for the boxers injured on the sideline looks like he's got cramps being worked on by jerry connor Was that the Super Bowl or was that a regular season? It was regular season. Yeah. It was regular season in Everett. Well, was he also Everett. the coach? No. Or was he after that? Yeah, no, he was the coach. He was the coach? No, Ahmed was the coach. Oh, I'm talking about Everett's coach. Yeah. No, no, no. No, was was Peter the coach? No, Ahmed was, was the coach. It was Ahmed the coach. Yeah, he was, was still coach. Was, was DiBiaso the coach of Everett? Yes. 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 So the, the big controversy in high school football these days he retired after last season, said he's done coaching. A week later, signs a contract to, to coach full-time at Catholic Memorial. Wow. Really? Mm. That's kind of... Um, and then, just after that, they dropped Brockton from the schedule. Hmm, that sounds a little fishy. So Everett's got the new coach. Uh, this year, as DiBiaso has moved to West Roxbury, what I'll Ball tell you. fumbled. Oh. Norman breaking out to the far side. He's going to keep it himself. Runs out of bounds. It'll be a third and about five. I'll tell you, that was, it was, um, back at that time, it was Brockton, Everett, St. John's Prep. Um, 
BC High were the opponents. It was one of those four, or two of those four, that was in the Super Bowl almost yeah. every year. When, uh, the, when the public schools, minus Everett, could compete with the private schools. Yes. The good old days. Yes. yes. The good old days. But we used to have some battles. And 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 um, I wouldn't put Pinkerton in there because we used to just smack them around yeah. on a regular. But that, that was always an enjoyable trip when we go up to New Hampshire. Derry, New Hampshire, and you'd have to pass How's Your Onion on the way to, to uh, Pinkerton <laughs> High School. Good run by a Johnny Horn for a first down Brocken. Well, the Minutemen have been doing an outstanding job defensively since yes. Um, yes. the end of the second half. They have. Because Brockton has, uh, they ran up 28 points and had not been able to put any more num put any more scores on the board since then. Yeah, they've really, Lexington's defense done a good job in this third quarter to um, contain the offense. What looks like a botched handoff attempt. The only, the only thing is when your defense plays tough for a quarter, your offense somehow needs to step up and get some points on the board. You know, especially when your defense plays good because that first and second quarter was tough on the defense for um, Lexington. Yes. But, I, but you know, you, you have to think about taking into consideration that the Brockton defense has um, dominated the Lexington Minutemen, so the um, offense hasn't had that much time off of the field. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. The, the defense has been really superb for the boxers tonight. Norman lets it fly, intended for Laguerre off the mark. And Laguerre kind of lost the ball because he was looking around trying to find it. And they're calling for a trainer as there is an injured boxer right back at the line of scrimmage. Everybody taking a knee, which is not ever a good sign. Trying to get you oh, a he's number got a cramp. who's down. At That's just a cramp, probably. But I'll tell you, those cramps. They happen often, especially early in the season. Early in the season, yes, because, you know, you may not be hydrated enough may not have stretched enough. Your legs seize up, yep. the muscles seize up, and, and it is excruciatingly painful. And it is fairly humid tonight. Officially only 65 degrees, but it feels closer to- Yeah, there's moisture in the air. 75. Yeah, there's moisture in the air. Yeah. That is number 29 that is being worked on. That is Sten Bruno. Sten Bruno's had a good game tonight, too. A couple of key receptions. So now we have this time. Ahead of schedule, let's talk about Nike, Colin Kaepernick, the ad campaign its relationship to the NFL and you guys' thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of Nike for stepping up and giving Colin Kaepernick that deal, multi-year deal, um, just to bring attention to the real issue. The issue is not the flag. As no matter what Donald Trump may say, you know, he's not disrespecting the flag. It's all about the disparity and what's going on with young African-American youth who are being shot while being unarmed um, repeatedly by um, police officers. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't think I'm anti-cop. I'm not. I love the, 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 the men in blue, and I respect them highly. But... It's and the, any loss of life is tragic. Any loss of life is tragic, you know? 
And I'm not saying black life matters and blue lives don't, no. Blue lives matters as well. I don't feel a cop should be, should be assaulted or, 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 or harmed just because he's wearing a uniform and a badge and a gun. Miles? Well, well said. Um, I'm proud of Nike for stepping up um, with the social issue going on and the, the issue of police brutality. And um, they've made a nice platform for um, Ka Kaepernick to um, express himself. What I like most about this deal is that they did not seek the NFL's approval because guaranteed the NFL would have shut it down. Yes. You know, the funny thing is, Nike, um, the NFL is um, has a contract with Nike for uniforms. For the uniforms. So Nike really stepped up there and um, showed their stuff, showed their courage. Now, that being said, Nubi Rato has a new documentary coming out touching on some of those topics, the relationship between police and the community. Uh, it's called Protect, Serve, and Care. Coming out this winter. Yes. Newbieproductions.com. Find out all the information there. And it should be phenomenal. I've seen a couple of the trailers. Yeah, Newbie yeah. was down at Joe Angelo's. I was providing him with some music about a week or so ago, and the trailer was awesome. Yes. It was awesome. I can't wait for it to come out. And it's gonna. And when it comes out, he's gonna have a big premiere at uh, Legacy Place at, um, at the Showcase, Showcase Theater. Theater. Yes, and that's awesome. So everybody, keep their uh, ears and eyes open for that announcement date. And come out and support. And come out and support him. There's some uh, big names in there. Big yeah. names. A couple of the uh, the victims' fa uh, mothers, fathers. I believe uh, someone related to Eric Gardner, Freddie Gray. And we got the new police chief, William Gross. William Gross. Uh, yes. yes. The commissioner of Boston Police. Ayanna Presley, yes. the new United States Congresswoman. Yes. Freshly elected earlier this week. And what an upset for Ayanna to take out a ten, Capuano. A 10 term congressman in Mike Capuano. In the third district race, uh, the, the Songus seat, as I refer to it, Nikki Songus retiring. Officially going to be a recount as we have a big run by a Johnny Horn. But up north in the Merrimack Valley, Dan Coe, Lori Trahan separated by 52 votes. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. We've had a couple um, close victories here in Brockton. Um, and Beauregard versus Ollie Spears a couple yes. of years ago was one vote. They recounted and uh, gained a couple of votes, one by three. That's why every vote counts. Yes. Your vote counts. That's right. And that's why I vote every year. Yes. Now, now it's funny because I, when I moved back to Brockton from East Boston, I was registered in East Boston, went to East Boston to vote. And here you see, uh, is that a Johnny again? Yes. Or is that? That yes, is a Johnny, Johnny again. Horn. Yes. But I went to East Boston to vote because that's where I was registered. I didn't know any of the candidates. And out of the candidates that were standing out there at the, at the polls, only one, one candidate reached out to me and asked my vote. And that was Mayor Menino. When he was running, he said, my name is Tom Menino and I'd appreciate your vote. I said, Tom Menino, you have my vote. And I went there, I voted for, for Tom Menino and Tom Menino alone because none of the other candidates, candidates right. made any attempt to persuade me, ask me, even interact with me. You know, and they were out there, you know, trying to get votes from me as yeah. people were walking in. And Tom Menino was the only one that spoke to me, and I voted for him and him alone. It's funny you should mention that. Ollie Spears versus Dennis DiNapoli a number of years ago. Ollie was driving around my neighborhood on Yom Kippur morning. My family went out to the cars as we were heading to Temple and Ollie pulls up. And we stopped and we're talking to him for about 20 minutes. And my brother on the way over to Temple said, you know, I've never seen or heard a candidate knock on the door. So he's got my vote. Yeah. I don't know his name. You'll let me know his name right before election day, but he's got my vote simply because he showed up. That's it. That's it. Sometimes all you gotta do is show up. And, and say something. Yeah. Ask for, ask for it. You Interact know? with the community. That's right. 
and look somebody in the eye when, yes. and, and say, hey, you know, I'm running for office. Can I count on you? Michael Norman in for the boxers under center. A flag thrown. The handoff to Atkinson, a gain of just a couple. It'll be second at about eight, but again, a flag was thrown. Yeah, it looked like a broken play. Yeah. Looked like he turned around to um, hand the ball off and, and the running back wasn't where he was supposed to be. False start against the boxers. We'll back him up five yards. It'll be a first and 15. Second and 15, rather, for the boxers. Three wide out set, Laguer to the near side. It's Atkinson and Horn in the backfield behind Norman. Horn gets around to tackle very nicely, but dangerously reaches the ball out there. Yes. Yeah, he should have been. And he uh, lost a shoe. He should have been tackled in the backfield, but because of his extra effort, he gained a few yards. Well, Got close back to the uh, line of scrimmage. Still a long way to go for first. Looks like about 13 yards, 12, 13 yards. 10-10 to go in regulation here between Lexington and the Boxers. Brockton up 28-8 to over a team that put up 42 on the Boxers last season. Funny what, what time can do. Pitch to Horn, he tucks it in, losing bounds, gets across the 30 to the 27. Or rather that was Derek Williams on the carry for Brockton. Atkinson replaced by number 81, Adamola Falei. I'm looking at a lot of stats from last year and players that did a lot of rushing and receiving last year are not even around this year, or they're not playing, at least not in this game. Trips to the far side, Norman in the gun. Grabs a snap, one-handed, has an opening, and he's got his man number four. That is Ted Tessa's second reception of the game. That was an interesting play, Matt. It looks like I thought the other receiver was going to catch it, and all of a sudden here comes number four that cut right across. Well, I think it was a timing play because yeah. if you see the replay here, you're going to see Tessa go down and then kind of break off. Top right corner. You're see how he right cut so right in front. Yeah. You thought it was going to fillet. Yes. And then Tessa Very comes out of nowhere. First down, Boxers as they're on the doorstep again in the red zone at the 17-yard line. Norman in the shotgun, trips to the far side. False start, Brockton. And it the may be with that play play that um, his, his job was to open up that area so that Tess had an open area to catch the ball and maybe get around the corner and um, get into the end zone. Timeout Brockton. Time Brockton after that pass intended for Navon Reed was blown dead. 8.17 to go that, in the season opener. That's a good timeout, Matt, because um, the coaches want to score here. The, Brockton's down in the um, deep in their territory. Well, they're just outside the red zone, but Brockton hadn't scored since the end of the second quarter. And they've had opportunities exactly. where they've gotten down into the red zone. They were inside the 20 and it had a turnover, and um, twice. Yeah, so this is why the coaches are calling a timeout, get their players mentally ready, focused. Come on, we can't have these uh, penalties being called. We need to score another touchdown. Keep this thing going. It's gonna be first and 15 for the boxers. Norman pitches out to Williams. Williams with some room to run across the 15 to the 10 to the five. 
Derek Williams, and it will be first and goal for the Boxers. And that was a nice run by Williams. Yeah, Williams. He just, you know, exploded. You'll see it here. You see him come around, little pitch out option play, and then he just explodes through the hole. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he does have an explosive. Yeah, he does yes. have an explosive uh, step. When he gets feels a little open, then he's gonna fly. First and goal to go for the boxers. It's gonna be Atkinson and Williams in the backfield. <sighs> There's Peter Colombo on the sideline. Yeah, he came by my school the other day. I'm over at the Kennedy, um, letting these students know that tonight's game is completely free if they brought um, if they brought a can goods, and um, you know, so it was very nice of him to come over and yeah. speak to the students sure. directly and say, "Hey, look, you want to come out and see Brockton play? Come on out, and it's a free one on us." Norman under center, Laguerre to the near side. The give to Williams, busting right up the gut, and he's in for a boxer touchdown. Derek Williams having a night to remember here at Marciano Stadium in the season openers. The atmosphere is just phenomenal. And it's nice. We haven't seen that in a while. It's been exactly since the first quarter. Half. Exactly. <laughs> You know, I feel like I'm in, in the um, the show is. Friday Night Lights. Lights. Friday Night Lights. It's what nice it's turned side into shot. here for the Camera boxers. Shot. And Nubi Rateau over there talking with John Shelby, one of the coaches, assistant coaches for um, Look at this. The boxers are just eating up the atmosphere. A couple of... Uh, you know, I'm, photographers I'm, down there. I'm looking down there on the sideline. Newbie's mixing it up with the players. He's got that camera. He's writing their mugs. Well, Newbie always likes to pretend that he was better than he actually was back in his day, sports related. So the example of this is he challenged Vanessa Clairvo, a soon to be Olympic hurdler to a race. Oh, is that when he pulled up with the hammy? That's when he, he's going to pull up land. Yes. He's, he's the, uh, Derek I he see Derek. I thought he was stopped through, right you, there. And, and he, he just, wouldn't be denied because he should have been stopped at the two-yard line. Seven thirty-eight to go. It is thirty-five to eight. And Carlin's Gene five for five on the night. Extra points. Nice long kickoffs. There you go, newbie, right in the mix with the football players. Yes. He's got the camera right there. And they're just having a ball on the sideline. Gene to kick off. Another high end over end kick, this one falling at the 20 yard line. And the Lexington receiver, one of the changes or differences I should say between the NFL and high school is that if your knee touches the ground, you declare yourself down. Yes. And that's what just happened on the 20 yard line. So now Lexington's got a very long field. You know what I'd like to see it won't happen, but I like to see just on the kickoffs or the punts, if he touches his knee, he, he's okay to get up and keep going. Say just on kickoffs. Low snap handled by Bianchi. He's going to keep it himself. Gets around a couple of boxers, spinning, hurtling, rumbling, stumbling, bumbling, wow. carrying half wow. the boxers team with him. Wow. wow. For a first down Minuteman. He would not be denied. Let's give him an A plus run. for effort. Yes. A plus for effort. But he's feeling it now. He's he's moving a little gingerly. Now 
Bianchi in the shotgun. Four receiver set, Bianchi thought quick pass, instead rolls out to the near side. He's gonna be wrapped up from behind, gets out of the tackle, still on his feet across the 50 to the 43. Sacrificing his body for yards and what could have been a touchdown. Yeah, he definitely nice sacrificed his body because he could have easily went out of bounds, but he yes. didn't. Right there, I thought he was down. Well, he might have to go get a new undershirt. Bianchi in the gun again. Rolling back to pass. He's hit as he throws over the middle, and it falls incomplete. Nice attempt by number 15, Mason Hatfield, sophomore, to try and um, stretch out to get that, that reception. Johnny Mack getting the crowd fired up. Sure is. Asking the fans to make some noise for the respective houses at Brockton High. Of course, Yellow got the loudest shout out because it's the best house at Brockton. Stop it. And a timeout called by Peter Colombo's Brockton Foxers. number of uh, different coaches for the boxers this year. Officially listed, Peter Colombo, Matt Campbell, Ryan Scanlon, Chris Brennan. Their defensive coordinator has departed, replaced by Brennan. Oh my God, he did what not catch. catch that. What a catch. Wow. And they're gonna rule he was out of bounds, so no interception. What a phenomenal yeah. grab by Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, he's got great concentration. You'll see it right here. Far sideline, you're looking at number 16. He didn't have possession before he hit the white paint, but what, what a grab. What I liked about that play, he was very aggressive about going after the football. Went right past the defender, because the defender looked like he had a chance to intercept it, but the big guy just came up and took it away from him. Flags thrown off sides against boxers. It'll be second and five. Or third and five, rather. Starting five for the Minutemen, Bianchi in the shotgun, four receiver set, low snap, quarterback keeper. Rolling up to the near side, gets around one tackle, he's to the 30 before he was hit hard. And it appears that the, um, the Minutemen have um, resigned to not let any other running backs touch the ball anymore because it's all quarterback keepers now. He's either throwing it or he's running it. Now he's got number three in the backfield right now, Tristan Quandre, who is actually a cornerback or a slot receiver. Bianchi tosses it, tipped and falling incomplete. The and tip by number 33, that's Trayvon Cordaro Goodwin, who also tipped the interception earlier that was brought in by Aaron Quite. Bianchi will keep it yet again. Down uh, to the 25. Now, is it me? Now they got Mutt and Jeff out here. <laughs> you got, you got a Anthony Bianchi, Bianchi, 6'1", 200 pounds, who's the quarterback, and his lead blocker 
is 5'8", 145 pounds, Tristan Quander. Yeah, I noticed that, Brian, that the quarterback's a pretty, he's the biggest guy in the backfield. Now and you he's say he's trouble. even bigger than some of the uh, Throwing it. linemen. And, and, but even, um, now, yeah, the, the roughing the passer. Well, there was a pack of wolves on Bianchi that time, and they weren't stopping until his face was in the turf. <laughs> but let me tell you something. If um, if Tristan Quander, well, let's see. Anyway, he throws see it away right there. right there in the little you face mask. Yeah, a little, okay, extra, okay, little, little extra, extra quickly. Yeah, it was, right there, it was right at the end on number 58. He pushed yeah, it was Bianchi unnecessary. I'm sure Coach Colombo did not appreciate that at all. A little bit too they aggressive. They had it for a big loss, and now they have a first down. Well, now that we have a quick stoppage in action, we want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from the season opener here at Marciano Stadium. At the helm, leading the ship. Oh, Captain, my captain, Paul Mandeville. On the ones and twos directing the show next to him in the truck replay graphics is Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton Bianchi's pass. Pass interference in the end zone. It'll be another automatic first for the Minutemen as we make our way now to the sideline. The seven time award winning director and producer Emmy nominated. Those are just stats and numbers. He doesn't really care. <laughs> Newbie Ratto, new documentary coming out, Protect, Serve, Care. Check them out, newbieproductions.com. Up top, we've got Trevor Simmons. If that name sounds familiar, yes, he is Mike's nephew. We've got Isaac DeRosa. Up top, we've got Phil Philippides. And of course, in the booth, Big Game Miles Jackson, B Mad Brian Madden, and myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. That's a stacked crew. That's an all-star team yes. right there. Yes, it is. Another flag thrown as Bianchi walks into the end zone, the touchdown, but there is some laundry on the field. Yeah, he's pick, picked up his flag. Touchdown, 35-14 now. And with five minutes to go, Lexington has the boxers right where they want them. <laughs> and they're going for two. Bianchi looking quick and floats it to the corner. It's going to fall incomplete. And the score will remain 35 to 14. Brockton up by three touchdowns. Well, all things considered, in the heat, in the weather, you're up 28 points at that point. Brockton's done a pretty good job of, yeah, we'll give Lexington a little bit, but not too much wiggle room. And I just want to take this time to mention someone who's been to almost, if not every game, with um, his brother, past principal, Gene Marrow. Uh, he lost his brother a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, Bo Marrow, and they're a staple in the stand. They were always a staple in the stands. They come to every game, and um, I just saw Gene leaving, um, and I know he's leaving with a heavy heart knowing that he's here without his best friend. Yep. And Tell great thing about Bo Mo, I mean, Bo Marrow was, loved the kids. He loved the kids. And I, I believe he was a, um, one of his last job was yeah. a substitute he's a teacher. substitute teacher here. Here at Brockton High, because he was a great communicator and he could talk to the kids uh, when they need needed somebody to talk to. Yeah, so, you know, I just want to um, say rest in peace. Yes. Bo Marrow. A staple here in Brockton for decades. Everybody knew Bo. Yes. Oh. 
An onside kick. Ball is out, and Lexington has it. Onside kick. Recovered by Lexington. Uh, they, yeah, they're going to say Lexington ball. And now we go to the cheerleaders. It's a nice kick. I mean, you see it perfect. Bounces up. It should have been fouled on, fell on by uh, right number there. 40. 40 should have had that. But, the um, pile up ensued, and once the ball's out in a pile up, you never know. Yeah, Malik Miranda let that go. I lied. After this play, I would assume we'd go to the cheerleaders for a special cheer. Trips to the far side for the minute, men. Bianchi in the shotgun. He's going to be sore tomorrow, the night he's had. <laughs> 4.59 to go in this one. Bianchi in trouble again, rolling out to the far side, throws across his body, long, coming back to catch it. His number 18, that's Justin Siri. Good call by the ref because that did hit the ground. Yeah. Maybe we can see it on replay. They're gonna, Here's I didn't the see the right roll incomplete. And you see him air it out. Siri comes back to the ball. And there yeah, you see, yeah. see it goes through his hands. Yep. He did a night, he, did, he, he tried to decoy it, but the referee was right there. You can see him coming right into there, the play. He hit yes. the ground and bounced into his stomach. Nice camera work. Bianchi in trouble, quick little Whoa. ditch pass and hit in the backfield. Sean O'Brien was ready that for that play. In the stands. Number three was hit, flags thrown yet again. Tristan Quander on the reception. <laughs> Roughing the passer against the box is another mental error. Yeah, let's see it. Right there, driving him into the ground. They're saying because he continued. Quarterback already threw the football and he continued with sacking him. And they called holding against Lexington, but the roughing the passer takes precedence. I'll tell you, Anthony Bianchi, the quarterback, he's really um, taking a lot of hits tonight, Brian. I think he's going to um, feel it tomorrow morning. Yeah, he's going to feel it. Is that him on the right there? You can see how he's stretching out there. Free 15 for the Minutemen. Four and a half to go, and they're at the boxer 30 yard line. Bianchi drops back to pass, has to roll out of the pocket yet again, throwing across his body, he's got his man, bobbled and dropped in the end zone, and number 18 looking into the turf in disappointment is Justin Siri. Yeah, golden opportunity right there for the receiver, number 18, and he blew it, dropped the ball. It was right in his hands, and you're gonna see it right here. Anthony comes up for the line of scrimmage and lets it fly. Should have had it. And he hits him right in the numbers. Can't ask for a better throw from a quarterback on the run. Exactly. No. The boxers took him out of the pocket, did a nice job scrambling, and like I said, good throw down there in the end zone. Four receiver set, Bianchi in the shotgun, flanked by Quander. Quander gets the ball, running right up the gut. Hit immediately, now just trying to hold on to the ball as he's swallowed up by pretty much the entirety of the boxer defensive line. Gain yes, of about five. And it looks like um, Bianchi may need a break. Throw over the middle ball is popped in complete. That was good, good yeah, defense. Good, good defense right here. 
He, basically, the uh, receiver was crunched. All Boom. he did was time it perfectly yeah. and just crunched. disrupt the play. Yeah. The receiver might have heard footsteps, too. Bianchi back what? to pass, rolling, 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 looking long towards the end zone, floating it up there. And trying to make the Odell Beckham Jr. catch was Mason Hatfield. And it falls incomplete. You can tell Bianchi is starting to lose a little bit of steam. Yeah. He's battered, bruised. Yeah. He's the leading rusher for the Minutemen tonight. Yes, he is. But he's still making accurate throws because um, had the, the receiver just moved back a little bit, all he had to do was just reach up and catch the ball. He didn't have to jump, and he would have been inside, been in the, in the corner of the end zone, kind of just before a corner kick. So that was fourth down, first and 10 for Michael Norman and the Brockton Boxers. Norman's had a phenomenal night tonight. Yes, he has. The give to Atkinson. He's got a head of steam heading towards the far side, trying to turn the corner. He's brought down after a gain of just about 10. And One they will I, give him the first down. And what I'll say about Norman is he's a pocket passer. He stays in the pocket. You know, he, he might move around a little bit, but he's not going to tuck the ball under his arm and run a whole lot. You know, that's not his forte. He may have it in him, but he hasn't had to do it at all tonight. Well, he did one time in that sec in that first half. He did remember he was down on this end of the field, and he ran it. it was, I was surprised oh, yeah. it, was, it was like a oh, draw, right. did, quarterback yeah. draw. I was surprised to how well he ran. He did run well. But like I said, he doesn't run a lot. The give to... Out of Johnny Horn. See, and the great thing what he's got, he's got players around him that can do the job. He just got to execute, get the ball to them either by handoff or by pass. Yeah, he has the tools yeah. and that he does, doesn't have to, um, you know, do a whole lot of do running. Lot. He doesn't but have to do what, what Le Lexington's quarterback has to yes, do. Yes, because uh, Bianchi has to run. And it's sometimes he's running for his life, exactly. <laughs> I took the worst. <laughs> we had a, we're we on the same page with <laughs> that one. <laughs> Have you guys commentated games together before? It's like, you know what you guys are thinking? Oh, yeah, back just in the a, old just days. A, just, just a, a few. few. Yeah. Just a few. <laughs> it's good to be back. Definitely so. Atkinson brought down after oh, no oh. gain. It'll be third and a long six. Brockett calls a time. Lexington calls a timeout. Lexington calls a timeout. Two oh eight to go in this season opening game here at Marciano Stadium. Brockton up thirty five to fourteen over the Lexington Minutemen. Brockton next week a six p.m. kickoff at Natick High School facing off against a very good Red Hawks team. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. Norman under center, two receivers, two backs. They give to Horn, or rather it's Williams lower in the head. Now that's a perfect example of the NFL's new helmet rule. You can't lower your head offensive or defensive side he did he did although credit to the NFL refs that's about the only time you'll hear me say credit to the NFL refs they didn't call it last night you know uh, I, I didn't watch last night's game I watched a, a little bit but I was watching um, the US Open I was watching Serena you know yeah. um, Probably a little better Make competition in that one. Falcons yeah. Eagles was a little bit ugly. And unfortunately, it won't be a USA USA because Madison Keys lost to Osaka. So, but it's going to be an enjoyable game, uh, uh, 
Fourth and three, Williams got a first down and more. Williams all the way to the 30, the 20, the 10, the five. Touchdown, Derrick Williams and the boxers. And that's a hat trick for Derrick Williams, his third touchdown, fourth touchdown of the night. And Derrick Williams for the Brockton Boxers, lowering the boom. Yeah, you can see it right there on the replay. Yeah. The, the um, offensive line did a nice job containing the defense inside. And with his speed, all he needed was a couple of steps. And that was it. And you know what, what I like most about that play is none of his teammates did a block in the back or, or committed a foul to bring the ball back. Yeah, great execution by the um, the offensive line and everybody else who blocked. And now Carlin's Gene has an opportunity to do something that I don't think has been done in the last decade. Go six for six on extra points. Holder is number six, Matthew Norman. So Carlin's Gene, five for five so far. Easily the best quick, uh, kicker since Clifford a few years ago. Whistle stoppage in. I think Not uh, Lexington. Not this game's out of hand, but Lexington had to call last yeah, second time out to get a substitution in. <sighs> well, Lexington has a long bus ride home this evening. All the way up 95. Carlin's Gene lining it up. Trying to put up a touchdown by himself, six points. Kick is up, and the kick is good. It's 42 to 14, Boxers, 147 left to go in the fourth quarter. And Brockton has matched Lexington's total from last season when these two teams played up in Lexington. It's um, poetic justice yes. for the boxes to get some payback from last year's uh, opening game. And it very well could have been 42 to nothing. Yeah. You know? Your Brockton High cheerleaders, Brian, are looking very professional out there. So we've yes. seen tonight a committee of running backs have an impact, led by, of course, Derek Williams and his four touchdowns. Uh, Johnny Horn has had an excellent game for the boxers. Atkinson's had some big contributions. The list goes on and on for the boxers' offense. Yeah, yeah. Derek Williams and Legary as well. Isaiah Legary. But Derek Williams, player of the game. 24 points all by himself. Yeah, he's been the go to guy. Yes, he has. Carlin's Gene, six for six on extra points. Excellent. Good job by Collins. That's. Outstanding. Yes. At the high school level. At the high school level, exactly. I'm sure that has to put a smile on um, the coaches' faces with their kicking game. Yes. High end of Ren kick taken by Quandor, who cuts to the far side. Brought down at or around the 50 yard line. 141 to go. Celebration begins on the boxer sideline, a season opening win against a Lexington team that lost their starting quarterback and their leading rusher from last season, both to graduation. And 
Brockton's got that very weird bye week. So if you really think about it, Bry uh, Brockton only has six home uh, six games this season. Yes. Six home games? Six, no, six games in total in the regular season. And then we go into that very weird MIAA fiasco of a playoff fiasco, system. Fiasco, yes. <laughs> so that'll be an extra three weeks. And then Thanksgiving. So, Brian, your first game back in the booth, a minute and a half to go. we got to get your thoughts on the new playoff format of the MIAA. Uh, well, you've already said it's weird. You know, so I don't know. I don't like it. That's that's my, that's my stance. Not many people do. Bianchi, long pass, and he's going to be picked off. That is number 34 with the pick for Brockton, Isaiah Jackson. I'm going to go. I'm going to go old school trivia on Brian because you're too young, Matt, to remember this. But Lexington, they look like the Baltimore Colts. A little bit their uniform, and you got the quarterback the numbers. Colts played in Baltimore. Yes, and you got number seven playing quarterback, who was a great quarterback back in the late '70s for the Baltimore Colts. He wore number seven. Uh, he could throw the ball too. Well, I would hope so. He's a quarterback. <laughs> I give you the initials, BJ. BJ. Who was that? Burt Jones. See, this guy I, had an arm. I would have never got and that. And some of you old school fans out there wouldn't who know who um, Burt Jones is. Wait, now, wait a minute. Do I have the right? I know it's Jones. Maybe I have the wrong first name. Burt Jones. But it was his last name was Jones. Great quarterback. So we have okay. Baltimore, uh, Baltimore Colts history this week. Next week, we'll try to get some Houston Oilers in there. There we go. I think it is Bird. Let me just. Brockton in victory formation takes a knee. They'll do it one more time to end this one. 42 to 14 is going to be your final score. With Brockton coming out on top. <laughs> 39 seconds on the clock. Michael Norman under center. He takes the knee. And that will do it for Marciano Stadium. 42 to 14 will be your final score. Guys, a very successful evening for the boxers. They had a couple of hiccups, but they've got plenty of time to work on them before BC High and Severian come to town. Yes, yes, that's true. And they did an outstanding job, you know, on, on both sides of the, the field, offensively and defensively. Um, the offense was, was clicking on all cylinders through most of the game with the play of Derek Williams and um, Johnny Warren. Burt Jones. Yep. There he is. Great the quarterback. Himself. Great quarterback. So 42 to 14 again, your final score. Miles, what went right for the boxers tonight? What do they have to work on? Well, what went right was they executed tonight. They had players that have come in this year, because some of these players weren't playing with us last year or they was on the sidelines, they did an excellent job of stepping up and playing that type of Brockton High football that Coach Colombo wants them to play. And, they, of course, the um, the trenches was totally controlled by the um, boxers tonight. Brian, yes. your final thoughts on the game? Final thoughts. It was um, a great night for Brockton Boxers football, and um, I enjoyed calling the game with you tonight. Well, Mr. welcome Mad back Dog. to the booth. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, Big Game Miles Jackson, B-Mad Brian, Mad and myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. Next week, 6 p.m., Natick High School. We will see you there.